Hey everyone, this is Andrew Kisson, Senior Marketing Manager with Zon Dental. We're here today with Mark Castanero, Sales Manager from Quattro Air Technologies. Mark, it is May, middle of May, and there's been a lot of interest and a lot of questions in the dental industry, you know, the lab industry, the clinical side, really about air purification and how everyone can take precautions to assure or to really improve some safety. What kind of insights do you have from the from the air purification side? Well, we've certainly been fielding a lot of phone calls from the clinic side of things. I think uh, that's been the primary focus only because dentists, some of them are still open because of uh, you know emergency procedures they may have to do. So that's basically where the information and the concern has been coming from. But at the end of the day, air purification is going to be important in the lab side of things as well. So in terms of what they're looking for, uh, they want protection against uh, the virus that's causing um, COVID-19. So it's, it's a specific coronavirus, which is COV2. So we've done a little bit of, uh, of research on that. We're cer certainly not uh, uh, virus experts, but we are air purifier, um, a, a company that's been making air purification systems for the last 30 years or so. So this is what they're concerned with. So in all of our conversations we've had with dentists, it's really been steering towards how can I be protected against coronavirus and other microorganisms that could be harmful to uh, dentists, to staff, and to patients. So we've been looking into that, and we've been suggesting systems that can protect them against those kinds of, of viruses. It seems that the common denominator here is HEPA filtration. That's what everybody really should be looking for in their air uh, purifier, whether it's an at source system or a, just a general air purifier, they should be looking for HEPA filtration. That seems to be a key component. And what, what about HEPA filtration is unique? Why, what does it kill or prevent that maybe some of the other units or filters on the market really don't take care. So the idea of HEPA filtration and viruses, that was always a, you know, the big concern is HEPA filtration is, is it going to be adequate to be able to capture uh, viruses like the coronavirus? Um, you can't really kill the coronavirus because it's not a living organism. And so when people talk about killing the organism, they're not really talking about it. They're talking about deactivating it. And so that is the concern. Can the HEPA filter actually capture it and can it become deactivated? So this is where our focus um, has been in trying to get the information out there. Of course, the misconception is that HEPA filters in general, to get specific, they need to be 99.97% um, efficient on particles that are 0.3 microns in size. The question we keep getting is, well, these coronaviruses, they're a lot smaller than that. And so obviously, you know, the, the HEPA filter is not going to be good enough and it's going to slip through the filter. Well, it doesn't quite work that way. Um, HEPA filters are rated to 0.3 microns because that size particle is, in fact, the hardest particle size to capture. When particles get smaller than that, the HEPA's efficiency, efficiency actually goes up. Um, to 99.999% on particles that are as small as 0 0.01 microns, which is where the virus is. They're actually a little bigger than that. So if the question comes up, you know, is a HEPA filter uh, going to be good enough to capture those viruses? Absolutely, they are. So that is definitely um, why people are talking about HEPA filters and how effective they are at capturing the coronaviruses. So, you know, we're in an industry where there's maybe some large open spaces with workbenches and then there are some smaller spaces with maybe um, shade, shade taking rooms or just offices in a laboratory. Are there any recommendations on, you know, how many units and where they should be positioned? What kind of best practices do you see out there, of, you know, when a lab or um, a practice actually does purchase or install one of these units? What do they do with it? Where does it go? How many? So basically, we can calculate that. It comes down to a mathematical formula. Um, if you had an air purifier in your home, for example, you don't need as many air changes in order to clean the air because there's not as many contaminants. If you're talking about a dental lab, there's a lot of dust. There's a lot of particles that are airborne. And so you want to have more air changes. 
And in order to get more air changes, you have to make sure you have an air purifier that is powerful enough to handle the volume of air in that room. So when somebody's asking for an air purifier, we obviously we ask, what is the application? Is it a dental lab? Is it a, a residential space? Is it a dental operatory? Um, that will speak to how many air changes are needed in order to clean the air effectively. Once we know how many air changes, now we can suggest a unit that will uh, generate enough airflow to be able to clean that air in the number of uh, air changes you're looking for per hour. So in the case of a lab, usually we talk anywhere between 15 to 20 air changes per hour. So if we take, let's say, 15, for example, if they were looking for 15 air changes, then we need a unit that can move that kind of volume of air. So we'll ask the question, how big of a space are we talking about? Is it an 8 by 10 operatory in a dental office, or is it a much bigger space? Are we talking about you know, 1,000 square feet, 1,500 square feet? Based on that information, we can calculate the volume of air in that room, and then we can suggest one or maybe even multiple air purifiers in that room to handle the amount of air that's in that room to give you the number of air changes. So it's a, it's, it's a mathematical formula. So, so also it could be a larger open space, but maybe if there's no, if there are no mills running, it might not need as many units or as much of an air change, but it, or a smaller space, but maybe there's five mills running. It'll all depend on the kind of the dust, the, the workflow that that'll, dictate how many units might be needed? Our recommendations are always based on applications. So we ask a lot of questions. How many people are working in the lab? Or if you have a lot of people, then tend, they tend to move around more and that tends to move the dust around. So you're probably gonna need uh, a more powerful unit for more air changes. If you're only one person in the lab, it's a fairly small lab, then you won't need as many air changes. But at the end of the day, you're still generating dust. And so we wanna make sure that we can clean the air in a certain amount of time, at least a reasonable amount of time. So what would you say to a dental lab owner or a technician that's looking, you know, we're getting back to a, a point where more and more states are becoming more relaxed with going back to work. What kind of recommendations or what, what should a laboratory or even a technician in a lab be looking for or be thinking about um, with air purification and going back? What's the first thing that, that maybe you have a recommendation for? So I think we're moving into a very different time now uh, that in labs are pretty much worried about either dust, which is a big thing, and some of them do, they're mixing acrylic, so there may be some odors, some uh, harmful VOCs that need to be dealt with. So that's basically what we've been dealing with the whole time, how much dust, how much odor, and we'll recommend a unit based on the size of the room. This whole COVID-19 thing has people thinking a little bit differently. So I think air purification will become extremely important. In the lab, we've always discussed um, at source capture being the most important thing. Prevent it from getting in the air so your air purifier doesn't have to filter through as much debris. That's the most important thing. So regardless of the industry, we always talk about at source capture and doing that effectively but you can't really catch everything. So we know that some particles are gonna become airborne and that's where the air purifier comes into play. We've always put HEPA filters into our systems. And so, you know, it's not something we've had to change. I think it's more about just bringing to light what those concerns are and how effective HEPA filters are. Odor filters pretty much speak for themselves. If you have odor in the lab, we'll be able to take care of it with an odor filter. The problem is now you have a lot of people that are talking about things like ionizers and and um, UV lights and do I need that to be able to kill uh, viruses or microorganisms that may become um, airborne in my lab or in my dental op for that matter. And so we, it's our opinion. We do have systems or our bigger systems like uh, uh, that we sell into larger spaces, we do and can equip them with UV lights, but it's not necessarily recommended and it's certainly not needed to kill um, viruses and microorganisms. Once these organisms, uh, viruses are trapped in a HEPA filter, they're just that, they're trapped. They're not gonna go anywhere uh, under normal operation. They're gonna be trapped in that HEPA filter. And we know that viruses and bacteria will eventually either die or become deactivated over a, a period of time. 
Some cases it could be a couple of hours, as it could be as many as a couple of days, but eventually it will become deactivated. So a UV light in a micro environmental system like an air purifier, in our opinion, is not necessary. We believe it's redundant and that it may, would be better off to have in a, an HVAC system in your, your heating ducts uh, or your air conditioning ducts would be more effective there. As air purification becomes more and more popular, me as a consumer, I see them, I see the Dysons, I see the different brands. Do you see from a production and from a manufacturing stand standpoint, do you see the possibility of HEPA filters being you know, low? What's the turnaround time? Is there a concern that maybe the raw materials might be um, ex running running low? Uh, there's no doubt that HEPA filters right now have are in really high demand worldwide. So there is going to be uh, a blip. Um, we, we think the blip may last as long as four or five months. We're fortunate in, in that we've been manufacturing systems with HEPA filtration for the last 25 years. So we have three or four solid suppliers that we can count on. But if HEPA filtration was not part of your normal production um, in terms of parts that you needed, you're probably going to be in a lot of trouble looking for, for HEPA filtration right now from suppliers. So there's definitely a backlog. Even though we're prepared, um, our air purifiers are smaller ones that, uh, that seem to have taken off in, in the dental uh, clinic side of things. We're back ordered right now. We're probably looking at uh, about six to eight weeks uh, before we can get back into a cycle that is normal, where we would normally be able to deliver in two to three weeks. Well, we know you, the work, the rest of the Quadro team, are doing what you can to to get that production back to normal. So there isn't, you know, that that waiting period. Really appreciate everything you guys are doing for air purification. Um, in the industry, it's going to be kind of a rough road as everyone starts to reopen and making sure that we're doing the best or they're doing the best to protect themselves. So, you know, we're all kind of in this together. Really, really appreciate what you and the rest of the Quattro team bring to the industry. Thank you, Andrew. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak to you. And uh, listen, we're, we're really good partners. So I appreciate the, uh, the time for us to get that message out to, your, uh, to you and your team.